Hey, it's Drew Bennett from Big Damn Kid, and I am doing my daily Transformers video. So I've got ep uh, issue number seven of Transformers, or the ongoing series of the original Marvel run. And here we have, in this issue, we've got Ratchet. He's coming to grips with having to become a warrior because he is the last Autobot standing, and the Decepticons have infiltrated the Ark. Shockwave's the commander. Megatron wants to get back into leading the Decepticons and defeat Shockwave. So we'll see what happens here. Starting off the episode, uh, the issue, I always say episode, the issue is called Warrior School. And Ratchet and Buster are you know, going through the woods of Oregon here and they come across a group of students who are out having a party in the woods. Uh, they accidentally crush the the students tent so it kind of ruins their party but they share some hot dogs with them and Ratchet learns a little bit more about earth culture it also gives them some time to give exposition about what has come before in the issue so Ratchet is learning what is learning what wood is because you know being from Cybertron everything's metal so he doesn't have any organic stuff on on Cybertron it seems that everyone they come across, Buster is very quickly telling them who the Autobots are and demonstrating that they can transform and things like that. There's really no robots in disguise at this point. They're, they're you know, pe people know all about them because Shockwave has gone and uh, taken over that oil rig and, you know, so they, everyone thinks that the robots are evil and so when we finally get to the Autobots being able to be, uh, you know, functioning again, because all of them are defeated, they're going to have some problems because the whole world's going to think that the robots are evil. And so, as they're having their party in the woods, and Ratchet is... Let's get that in focus here. As Ratchet is cooking hot dogs with his laser scalpel, Buster has a sudden shocking pain in his head. As we recall, last episode, issue, uh, Buster had been connected with Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime did something to Buster. We don't know what it is, although we suspect what it is. And so he thinks back to, you know, there where Optimus is connected to Buster. We get some more of that. And Buster leaves with the students who are there, and Ratchet goes because he has to go back to the Ark and he has to, you know, he has to step up and be the, the last Autobot there and, and save his comrades. Meanwhile, we go back to another facility of GB Blackrock. He is this millionaire uh, industrialist. He's not a billionaire at this time. This was the 80s, remember. And so, millionaire industrialist, he has all these different places that um, he builds things. So, here he has an, an aerospace and again, it has major defenses on the outside of the building. It's been stepped up. Uh, but one of the workers finds this tape deck, free tape deck. I'll take it and bring it in, bring it inside. So he takes in Soundwave, unbeknownst to him. Soundwave, as he leaves him in his locker, busts out. He and Laserbeak cause some havoc and take over this facility. So, you know, they, they take everything over. The weapons do nothing to them. Meanwhile, they are, you know, breaking things down, making sure that uh, the people can't transmit outside. And with Laserbeak's laser precision, he attacks the transmission, but doesn't hurt any of the humans. So, so far, they haven't really um, directly hurt any of the humans. Meanwhile, GB Blackrock is really not that happy because <laughs> another one of his facilities has been taken over. And this is very public. And so he is very upset about this. We cut over to the hospital where Josie Beller is. Josie Beller is that computer programmer extraordinaire who works for GB Blackrock. He really has a soft spot for her. He brings her whatever she needs in her hospital room. She's paralyzed except for one arm and she is still working on that computer and she vows to defeat the robots. She is, you know, she wants revenge for what happened to her. We'll see more of her later. Meanwhile, we've got Ratchet. Ratchet goes back to the Ark. He sneaks into the Ark, and he discovers he discovers all the Autobots non-functioning. He finds Optimus Prime's head, 
and he is just in utter despair. But Optimus tells him that it is time for him to become a warrior. Even though he's a doctor, he has to learn to be a warrior by experience here on Earth. We go now over to where Buster is. Buster has returned home, and he... Uh, Sparkplug is still in the hospital because of his heart attack, and Buster needs to kind of take over what's happening in the in the auto shop. And he has a confrontation with his friends. He feels that they're, you know, saying that his father's not not smart. It's real easy to be a mechanic, and he just turns on them, and they leave. Once they leave, he has another episode, seizure, whatnot, and he notices that once he kind of comes out of that things are floating around so he's getting some sort of power here and he doesn't quite understand ratchet back at the arc ratchet is going through the arc and he is grabbed from behind by none other than megatron so megatron grabs a ratchet and beats him up and he's going to kill him but ratchet then thinks like a warrior, realizes that he's going to call Megatron's bluff because Megatron does need him. He can show how he can be useful to Megatron in defeating Shockwave because that's all Megatron wants to do right now is, you know, what he really wants to do is defeat Shockwave. And so trying to defeat Shockwave, Ratchet has, uh, he knows what happens there. So between Megatron and Ratchet, we do get exposition as to what happened to Shockwave. Uh, after the Decepticons raided the Ark in space and the Ark crash lands on Earth. They know that Shockwave turned into his uh, space gun form, which can have space travel, and he crash lands in Antarctica in the Savage Land. Again, another Marvel Easter egg tie-in there is that he crash lands in the Savage Land, so we have dinosaurs and things like that. Between Ratchet and Megatron, it's actually very unclear as to who is speaking in some of these parts because, you know, Ratchet knows some information and Megatron knows some information, but they're going back and forth as to what happened to Shockwave and also we reveal that the Dinobots had something to do with defeating Shockwave in the first place. So Ratchet makes a deal with Megatron that he will defeat Shockwave, possibly with the help of the Dinobots because... We do see in the very last panel that we are looking for the Dinobots now. So soon we're going to be seeing Grimlock, Slag, Sludge, Swoop, Snarl. All those guys are going to be coming to this to the series, and they're going to be, you know, fighting Shockwave. Well, anyway, that is issue seven. I gotta stop saying episode. Issue number seven. Ratchet. Oh, at the end. I'm sorry. Ratchet and Megatron, they perform this ceremony, which is called the Rite of Oneness, where they mix their two their two fuels together, and that means that they are bonded together uh, so that they, they can't break that bond. So, you know, whoever breaks the bond gives his life in forfeit according to our Cybertronic lore, and in all our history, no Autobot has ever broken the bond. And so Ratchet is... He's pretty much stuck. You know, he can defeat Shockwave, but then you still got Megatron to contend with. Or he gets destroyed by Shockwave. So he's really, you know, he's in a bind. So now, time to go look for the Dinobots. Anyway, this is Drew Bennett from Big Damn Kid. You can find me on Instagram as Big Damn Kid, on Twitter, on Facebook, and you can also find me at BigDamnKid.com where I'm posting up some uh, blog posts about this, as well as some additional pictures and, and things that, uh, that you might want to see with uh, regards to the Transformers, uh, specifically each of the individual issues. So, thanks for watching. See you next time.